Hello, I'm Dr. Pierre Simon. Wonderful being back with you. We've been talking about moral decision making and today we're on the principle based living, which is level six of moral decision making. Uh, but remember this, it, at New Horizons Institute of Counseling, we're for healing peace and harmony. We're there to help you. Even if you just have a question, happy to answer your questions. Well, we've been following this. This is um, the uh, brainchild, you might say, of doc, a psychiatrist, Dr. Timothy Jennings, uh, where he came up with the seven uh, moral decision-making levels as we uh, go from childhood on. And uh, for those of you that have uh, studied uh, developmental psychology, you know the developmental uh, stages of, of growth. Uh, here, here we're talking about spiritual, moral stages of growth and how that is just as important and it's uh, a reflection of those developmental stages of growth as well. We have previously spoken of uh, reward and punishment, uh, marketplace exchange, social conformity, law and order, love for others. We're at number six today, principle-based living. And then next week, we're gonna talk about being an understanding friend of God, which will end our, our series. And I, uh, I've enjoyed doing this series. Uh, I'm already working on the next series which is gonna be a lengthy one. We're gonna be getting into addictions in the, in the next series and more deeply than I've spoken of before. So, principle-based living. A principle is a fundamental truth. So fun, what's a fundamental truth? Well, you know, it's a, you water the flowers. If you don't water the flowers, they're going to die. It's a fundamental truth. If they don't get the nutrients, the water they need, the nourishment they need, they're going to die. Plants, flowers, trees, and even us humans, it's the same. Those are fundamental truths. You can change your belief about the truth, but the truth is still the truth. They're going to die. You can say, oh, they're not going to die. I'm going to choose to believe that's not going to happen. And because I choose to believe it's not going to happen, therefore it won't happen because I'm believing hard enough that it's not going to happen. And here they die. Why? Because it's a fundamental truth or design law by God. So a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as a foundation for a belief system. If we have fundamental truths and we acknowledge those fundamental truths, live by those fundamental truths as a belief system, well, what do you think? You think the trees are gonna thrive? Do you think good things are gonna come of that? Yeah, more than likely, uh, you're gonna have a good system because you're, re you're, you're recognizing, you're facing the reality of these fundamental truths and you're going along with them, um, supporting them, uh, not trying to break the harmony uh, that is seen within those fundamental truths because what happens if you break harmony, you stop feeding the water, you stop giving the nutrients or you, you stop feeding yourself, you break the harmony, you die, the grass dies. The fundamental truths cascade down where they br start breaking apart and then in breaking apart, they die. Things die one after the other until everything dies. Principle-based living makes decisions based on understanding God's facts and principles, God's design laws and protocols. Well, okay, I want to live a principle-based life. So that means spiritually, morally, uh, emotionally, physically, mentally. To do that, I need to face the facts, the truths, the fundamental truths, the fund and, and allow my beliefs to fall in line with those fundamental beliefs, beliefs or, or truths, what's going to happen? I'm going to thrive, uh, hopefully, 
most of the time, if not all the time, there's going to be thriving that will occur. There's a harmony that's occurring when you allow yourself to do that. If you change that, oh no, um, I'm going to choose to believe the opposite. Death is going to occur, some kind of death. With that, more things are going to break down. So level six decision making is when you do something because it's understood to work, not because somebody said so, or uh, not because there's a rule that says you have to do that. If you have a rule in your church, is it a fundamental rule? Is it a fundamental truth? Or is it a rule that's a ritual that you just believe because it's a ritual handed down um, and basically it's totally useless in our principle-based living. If it's useless, then it causes us to fall under those previous four levels where there's immature thinking, immature behaving going on, not the mature where we're doing things the way that God would have us to do things, which is the right way, a thriving way, a way that uh, builds instead of tears down. If I have rituals that are placing a burden on me and they're not productive at all, gosh, uh, what's the point of that? But if I say, no, I'm going to take the time to help the community, to wash a window, to um, paint the fire hydrants. You know, at our church in Daytona, back in Daytona, uh, uh, we would do those community things and uh, paint fire hydrants, you know, for the police or the fire department, certainly with their permission. Um, wash windows, go to stores, uh, uh, go to laundromat and give out quarters. Um, giving out to the community, what does that do? It, it produces. What does it produce? It's going to produce something good. You know, it may not get them into church, but certainly it's going to help them in some way. There's thriving occurring. Something good's coming out of it. But if I'm doing a ritual that's just useless and I'm just, you know, it, it, it causes me to dread having to do it, but this is what we do. Does that sound like it's coming from God or man? Yeah. You gotta think about those things, question those things sometimes. Well, the mature level six that we are talking about, truths and principles, become part of our inner workings so that we can stand and walk the Christian walk. We can stand up straight and know that we're doing good with whatever it is we're doing. There's purpose in it that in the purpose it's fitting within the harmony of whatever God's life cycle, God's uh, truth, love, liberty is, is saying in that harmony we're thriving Maybe others around us are going to be thriving as well. Don't you think uh, you'd hold your head up higher? You'd feel better and stronger? I, I think so. Principle-based living exercises our minds to walk in harmony with God. It's the law of exertion at play. If I'm doing something good over and over again, I'm exercising my mind to continue to do it there's going to be thriving. If I'm exercising my mind to do something bad, something wasteful, useless, selfish, now I'm damaging my mind. And not only damaging my mind, I'm damaging my body. And research will bear that out when they look at the brain scans of people who think that way and live that way the brain scans show they're not thriving in the brain as those people who are doing it God's way, thinking those good thoughts, living that life that's productive and helpful. 
And it doesn't mean you have to be rich to do that. You don't have to have all the money in the world. You just have to have a desire, a heartfelt desire to want to do those things. Well, let's look at an example. Legalizing marijuana may become a federal law, but they can never pass a law to make marijuana healthy. I remember when I was younger, especially uh, in high school when all this was coming out many years ago, you know, they, they, oh yeah, no, no, you can do this, it's not, not going to bother you, it's, health, it's healthy, it's good for you, all that. They even came out with a study from Canada, some researcher, uh, and they put that all over the news, you know, oh, it's perfectly safe, it's good for you, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, later, they found he messed, he fraudulently um, delivered the, uh, uh, the article, the journal information. Uh, his research was fraudulent. Uh, it, it didn't stand up to others trying to s see if they could come up with the same results as the study. And he admitted he was a heavy marijuana user and he wanted to bless everybody by giving them good reasons why they should keep using marijuana. Well, the more mature individuals will choose not to use marijuana. Why, why do you think that? Because someone said so? Because it gave them a headache? Because uh, it made them hungry and they didn't want to gain weight? No, a more mature individual is going to choose not to use marijuana because it violates health laws. So that law of health, God's design law, uh, that unchanging law that we, we spoke of, it violates health laws and damages the body and brain. And that's a fact. It damages the body and brain. Plenty of research about that, uh, brain scans and with our with the technology nowadays, uh, it's amazing what they can see, showing what it does to the brain, showing the specks, little white specks. They used to call them cotton patches when they first came out with the CAT scans. Um, and they wondered, what, what are these cotton patches in the, in the brain of these certain people? And they thought something was wrong with the CAT scan. So they researched it further and they discovered those individuals were marijuana users and they found that the marijuana covered uh, the, uh, the chemical in the marijuana, the HTP, or, uh, covered the tips of the dendrites with a ceramic-like coating. When I say ceramic-like, it's not porous. Nothing can go through it. Therefore, no neuro pathways are open when that occurs. The chemicals are not flowing, and they shrink. The dendrites will shrink because they're not being nourished. And as they shrink, you get this disconnect and uh, um, spaciness. You know, if, you've, if you've done marijuana, I did when I was young and uh, in high school, but you know what? Yeah, that's the spaciness. Right? And we would think, oh, that feels good. You know? You're getting dumber. It's damaging the brain. It could take a year for someone who's been doing marijuana on a regular basis. Once they stop, it can take a year for the brightness to come back if they haven't already done more damage. And if so, it may take longer. And hopefully that comes back. And certainly we'd, you'd call it also an entry level drug in, into other things. But the point I'm making here is you don't do it just because others are doing it. Principle-based living is knowing that it's unhealthy, therefore I'm going to choose to not do it. I'm going to choose to not do something that's going to damage me or damage my body or damage my relationships. Principle-based living is when a mature individual chooses not to use illicit drugs, hold bitterness, or cheat others, and the list can go on. God constructs our minds to thrive when doing good. What happens when you don't thrive? Well, it disrupts the neural circuits. It diminishes uh, 
God's design of harmony, it's not good. Going against God's design, against his design laws, if you want to call it divine laws, the, uh, the, the principle of uh, living in a moral, uh, mature way grows you. You thrive, but when you stop, it distorts your character, damages your character. It erodes the foundation of peace inside of you. You, you mess up the harmony, you start breaking down. Dr. Timothy Jennings, a psychiatrist, states that disrupting those neural circuits in the, in the brain also activate fear circuitry, which causes inflammatory cascades. Think of that word inflammatory. They're using it a lot more nowadays uh, when talking about medicine and, and, and research and all that stuff and our diseases, especially with COVID and, uh, and whatever the disease they're gonna come up with next inflammatory cascades. It's not the, uh, the disease that necessarily kills you, it's the inflammation uh, that comes from that, uh, and in some cases and from the medicine they give you to treat it, um, that causes a breakdown. It cascades, it's, it's tumbling, one gets worse in a, in a, like a rock coming down and suddenly four rocks, suddenly a whole dozen rocks, suddenly it's a whole bunch of them. It's that inflammatory cascade of inflammation starts spreading throughout the body and damages our brains, resulting in pain and suffering to the one who commits such acts. They're disrupting the harmony when they're doing that. When principle-based living becomes a threat to the immature decision makers of level four and below, what we've spoken of previously, self-protection activates through denial, deception, and selfishness. Remember we had said, where there's self-protection, there's always selfishness, it goes hand in hand. And wherever there's self-protection and selfishness, then the person takes actions um, to uh, comfort self, comfort the threat, the potential threat that they're experiencing. Uh, we, we, we might say self-soothing, like taking a drug to self-soothe, eating too much to self-soothe, not eating uh, to feel like you're in more control, so you're self-soothing, now you're in more control. Ouch, not, that's not good. That means the fear and emotion center of the brain is activated when that occurs. That's the limbic system of your brain. I've previously referred to the fear and emotion center of the brain as the brain's basement. So think of the top half and the bottom half, and we often think of the right and left hemispheres well, think of the top half and the bottom half uh, where the basement is in that bottom half as opposed to the brain's upper room, so I call it the upper room, where good thinking, competent thinking, problem solving occurs up here, not, not down there in the fear-based center. That We need that for occasional threats, uh, genuine threats and so on, but uh, you know that's the, where the fight or flight center is located. and. Uh, so if we need to know if there's a car weaving in front of us, uh, that part of the brain has to activate to get protection. What do I do next? But if I let it control me, then I'm going to allow selfishness and self-protection to take over and I'm just going to weave quickly, not thinking who's in the other lane that I'm weaving into, causing a cascading effect of car crashing. Uh, that's not good either. So we don't want to allow that basement of the brain to take control of us. We want to use it when we need to use it to act quickly, but keep the upper room active by thinking for a moment, I need to look at the mirror, make sure nobody's next to me to get over there. 
or I need to prepare because I see someone weaving. I need to look first, see if anyone's next to me, just in case I have to pull over. Now I'm staying up there, but I've also allowed my fear and emotion center to give me some self-protection in a wise way while allowing the wisdom of, of the upper room to stay in control. I guess we could also think in nowadays with all this politics and uh, craziness going on, think of a crooked politician. All right, now I'm not taking sides here. I'm just, it could be Republican, it could be Democrat, it could be independent. I think, you know, they, they have crooked ones in all of them. Uh, but think of a crooked politician. In recognizing his conscience's potential threat, he's got to override that threat somehow. So in our minds, we have a conscience, and that's in the upper room. And if it's sensing a potential threat, if it's saying, oh, uh, well, uh, that's not right, you shouldn't do that, but you may get exposed, uh, now, what does that, per that person do? If they don't stay in the upper room, uh, the, the conscience will call, cause them to drop down into the basement of the brain for self-protection. It's a dark place down there. And because of the darkness, you don't know what's lurking in that basement. Bad thoughts, negative thinking, uh, fear, anger, rage, paranoid, depressed, anxiety. Remember, we're talking about thinking. We're not talking about true chemical imbalances or uh, brain abnormalities here. Uh, anxiety, uh, suicide, homicide, the bitterness that, that's, that's in the darkness down there. That's why we don't want to live in darkness. But when you go down into the basement, that's what occurs. Self-protection is always associated with selfishness that shrinks the character of truth, love, and liberty. Where is that found? That's up there. It's in the upper room. Truth, love, and liberty. Good thinking is up here. We've spoken before in details about that. Look back in some of those programs and, and you'll hear those details. But truth, love, and liberty being up here, we're dropping down there in the darkness of negativity and self-protection hmm. for the politician neutralizing the potential threat of losing future voters leads to denial, deception, and that triggers name-calling, vilifying those presenting the truth to avoid the discussions of facts. Try asking a politician a question that they don't want to answer and they you know, go around the bush you know, and they hem and haw or they change the subject quickly or they throw it back at the opponent to identify something wrong with them. We do that in church too, you know, if you ever notice that, the hypocrites in church immediately put the spin on you or someone else or the pastor or the, the Sunday school teacher or, or whoever, and that keeps you focused on them, keeps you off balance so you can't focus on the real problem. Principle-based living is not justified simply because of Jesus Christ living it out. It's justified because it's right, it works. It's based on fact, truth. And if that's the case, why not try it for yourself and see what happens? The Bible tells us, for the good news is a revelation of God's true righteousness, character, methods and principles that restores trust in God and results in recreation of a righteous and Christ-like character in humans, restores trust in God, restores trust in uh, his character in methods and principles. In other words, harmony is continuing, it's strengthening harmony. Now, you know, there's such a thing as a circadian rhythm in, in our bodies that they call it a circadian rhythm. There's an actual rhythm that goes on. You disrupt the rhythm by not sleeping 
or not eating or not, not doing something you should be doing, it disrupts the rhythm and you feel out of sorts and you're not even sure why, well, the whole system is now out of whack. We want to stay in that harmony, in that rhythm. So the results of recreation of a righteous and Christ-like character in humans, just as it's written, the Christ-like will live by choosing what is right in governance of themselves, choosing what is right in governance of yourself, in doing what's right for yourself, which is going to help you to thrive in harmony with the facts, the truth, uh, the way God designed things to be, and by trusting God with how things turn out. Letting go, letting God, I'll do what's right, I'll trust that God is going to cause these things to happen or help these things along for my best interest. And whatever happens, he'll walk with me through it help me through it, and I'm going to come out that other side better as a result of it. Well, I hope you got something out of this today. May your troubles be more minor, your blessings more, and happiness come through your door. God bless. We'll talk to you next time.